thanks a lot guys for staying you know taking so long so long and so being so so patient so uh, thanks a lot my name is Rahul Rao I'm a senior developer with Walmart Tech in Bangalore I work on web applications and build web applications and advanced user applications for the Athletics team I'll be talking about progress and web apps and what design considerations you should have when you're building one and as well as designing one so before we start, uh, how many of you downloaded the uh, UX India app, the link that was sent yesterday? Nice, nice. Uh, so uh, what, what, so to, to just summarize the steps that you needed to do, you needed to go to App Store or Play Store and then download the app and open it up, right? So what happens if the App Store isn't there? What happens if I tell you that, okay, you can just go around, open up one browser, Type in the URL, possibly a smaller one, and the application that opens up interacts as a real application. So that's what progress and web apps are. And throughout the uh, presentation, I'm going to talk about how they are more app like rather than the other application. Right? So uh, to, to start off, let me tell you how we all ended up on the progress and web app journey. So uh, we were part of an event in Walmart called the Greenhouse. It was a cross geography collaborative event. Uh, so the team back in Bangalore, we wanted to give our customers, or the end users who were the store managers, uh, a solution which was always available. So yes, mobile apps. Uh, but we didn't have mobile app development. So that's when we started investigating towards progressive web apps. So progressive web apps, oh, so yeah. How many of you have already heard about progressive web apps? Great, great. So, uh, so if you have, then you would know that they are, say, say, sort of the future of the mankind, right? They are going to bring back the rainbows and the unicorns and bring balance to the force. Anyone, any Star Wars fans here? Good. So you know what the force is. And in the process, push the mobile web forward in parallel to mobile web and data backup. So, uh, this, so this is what I read in one of the blogs in my article. So what progressive, so if you, if you are currently working on an application or you want to build an application, an application which utilizes JavaScript or uses JavaScript frameworks and you want to progressively enhance the experience of the user. So this particular talk or this, this whole concept of progressive web apps is something that you should so progressive web apps are, are, are applications that are built using modern web technologies which deliver app-like experience to the users. Uh, they evolve from pages in browsers to top-level items at the user's home screen, which means your application is always available on the home screen instead of going and running it on the browser. And they exhibit the value of performance. So features that, that are exhibited by a progressive web app by default or generally is that it's responsible. So we are all designers here, and we know that applications that you develop now or design now need to be responsive. Uh, applications are instantly loading. They have push notifications. You know, you can re-engage the user back to the app if they have moved on to something else. You have the add to home screen, so the driver is coming nicely on this, but yeah, you have app, app to home screen feature, which was generally what the native applications out of 4A, and they are fast as well as they're secure. Okay. So there was supposed to be a bunny here with, with an image, but yeah, okay. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is uh, if, you, if you see the, the whole problem of making your users wait for your application to load, then we all know that the longer you make a user wait for your app to load or application to load, the chances are that you're going to bounce off to bounce off to something else. So the need of the R right now is to have instant reloading applications. Progressive web apps, the way they the way instant reloading part is done is the service workers. But before we get into what service workers are, let's look at let's look at benchmarks that we should be looking at when we are uh, sort of looking at what is the timeline when the app is actually available. So so let's look at time before speed. It is a time when you're giving the user a feedback that something is happening. You click on the icon, the app comes up, you show him the, the loader image, a sort of a top bar, the 
user gets a feedback that yes, something is happening on the app. And it was being to say, is your app actually available? They paint about the full content, say the birthday, the headline text, something that the user can find useful. You, you show them what the outline of, outline of the application is, show them the cards, show them what they are expecting. And it was meaningful interaction. This is when the app is actually available for the user to use. If the user starts tapping on the page, and some and the app actually interacts with the user. So that is so the, the idea is to reduce these three benchmarks as less as possible. The time has to be as less as possible. So the way you okay, this looks like. So actually nobody how many of you like this? Okay. <laughs> the, the idea is to kill this guy. I don't want to see an offline dinosaur no matter how cute and how thick it is, but I want to build this guy. So we do not want offline web applications. Applications should be available all the time. So the way you do it on a progressive web app is through service workers. Service workers are scripts that run in the background. They are separate from the web page. So think of them like a separate thread. They respond, sorry. They respond to events, network, requests that are made from the app from the page and have an intentionally short lifespan. So they are powerful when it comes to offline usage. So you can actually cache whatever content that you have opened so that when you are offline next time, you can actually go and use the application with the content that has already been cached on the client side. And it offers significant way in terms of instant reloading, like I was talking about instant reloading applications, where applications can be done much more faster. And since you are not able <coughs> getting your data from some server, your application becomes that much more fast. So this was something very interesting because as a web developer, I really didn't have to worry about offline. My users were always in front of some sort of computer, laptop, and they had internet. On the mobile, that's that was more difficult. I am right now I do not have internet on my phone. Some of the network sucks, but okay. So that's where we started looking at instant reloading and offline caching because my, I do not want the users to go back and look at that dinosaur ever again. Okay, so uh, let's talk about how applications generally end up loading on the browser. We know applications, you open the browser, applications come in, right? What happens is you have your HTML that arrives on the browser. It goes and makes some requests, get the JavaScript, gets the CSS, the JavaScript gets passed, and that is when your application is. So this, there is this whole wasted time before the HTML arriving and the JavaScript getting passed. The next is what most of these uh, frameworks nowadays are doing is you have server side hydration where your, your HTML comes in, your view gets painted, but your JavaScript still hasn't come in yet. The JavaScript comes in and gets a ball. It means you have a view, but you really cannot do anything with the application. So there is this uncanny value between usability and the seeing of the app. Next is where we really should be looking at getting to. This is what we call as progressive render plus bootstrap, where the HTML arrives, the view that, it, that I want to show to the user starts coming in immediately, and then the application progressively enhances and gives the user uh, sort of a progressive experience, where the application unlocks its feature to the user. So uh, depending upon how much time the user is, where the user is, the application reacts accordingly. So uh, now we were talking about service app, you know, service workers. So this gives us an opportunity to start thinking how our applications are made. Uh, to, to take a step back, before you get into all the, uh, the architecture at all, think back what sort of an application you're making. If your application is a more data centric, has a lot of data that the user needs to see all the time, then probably this is, you need to rethink what you need to do or what is the architecture that you need to go. Uh, so what happens is with application shell is application shell architecture is when you send the most necessary content of the application down to the network first. Say the, the toolbar, the draws, a few cards with the most necessary information down to the network first so the application or the user gets to see this information as quickly as possible. And then you dynamically populate the rest of the content as in the user is using the So the major things that you need to consider when you're making a progressive web app is, is it has to be responsive. 
uh, should be having an active hook screen feature as uh, as a PDF we are doing. You should be making it as app like as possible. Uh, ideally, you should be doing with the application shell architecture and the content caching part. So make it as much of an app as possible. I'm, I was thinking of not talking about any specific framework or JavaScript framework as such. Uh, but the framework that generally you can use for making a good video do is, is using React. I didn't want to talk about React, I wanted to talk about Angular 2 because uh, not a lot of people do actually talk about Angular 2. So it was finally released on September 14th officially, uh, which happens to be Engineer's Day. And uh, uh, we, we, you know, any application that you build on Angular 2 is automatically progressive. So it makes your service work over by, by, by default. You have your cache manifests for caching and everything. Uh, and so you ideally have one developer which can make applications for all the platforms and, uh, and the application is automatically progressive. So I was looking at one of these blogs and since I'm not a designer, I wanted to know what the design considerations that I should be keeping uh, when I'm developing or designing a PWA. Uh, and I came across a blog by Owen Campbell. Uh, who talks about what, what the consideration should be and a few of these recommendations that he gave were, were really nice. So uh, one of the things is the, the screen transition shouldn't really be, you know, be slow when you're moving from one screen to the other. Do not depend upon the network to load another page when you're moving from one to another. The tactical area should give you a touch feedback. That's in it. Uh, so when you are so, so scrolling between your, in, in your page, if you by chance or accidentally touch or tap <coughs> on, a, on, a, on an element, that shouldn't immediately give some sort of feedback. Um, the content shouldn't jump as a page load, which means if you're on a page, and this literally happens that as and when the images start coming in, the page actually jumps, that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. Uh, but a non-content shouldn't be set up. And provide an easy way to share content, which means if your application is sort of a, you can give a social sharing uh, part in your application, the user shouldn't have to navigate from one part to the other. Give the, give the sharing part as much easier as possible, or easier to find as possible. Uh, use system fonts as much as possible. Uh, avoid overly web like designs. So you are building an app, uh, use as much, keep it as much as you can. And touch interaction should be implemented very well, or not at all. So, uh, yeah. uh, so these are a few references I would like to talk, tell you about. Talk by Andy was funny. I'm almost done. So, uh, if you get a chance and you really want to know what what progressive setups are and much much more detail, please go through this. I'll probably be sharing this on on some uh, either slide share or somewhere. Uh, there are a few other references given here. Yes, I'm done. Please be keep in touch. That's my only line in my So, uh, is it possible to have a native app and have a kind of, uh, uh, is it like you would suggest web view or having a, something like progressive web app, web app for something that is dynamic that is going to change a lot and the structure and everything having a native app, is it possible or? So you don't have to worry about the content changing. What you need to worry about if your app is changing at all. What if the next year when you come in and there is an app which is a little different than this. What if the, the top panel has changed, what if the structure has changed. You need to go to App Store or some place and you need to download it, right? With another application with, with this called progress and develop, you do not need to do anything. One year later, if it's still available there on your home screen, you just tap on it, the application is refreshed automatically. There is no downloading process. Now coming to uh, whether I would like, I would, I would suggest using a web view for content refreshing applications. Uh, you really do not need, that's my, uh, obviously that's my personal opinion. But uh, if you if you just want to build one one application which will work on all the different platforms, <coughs> go ahead. This is not a But if you already have a native application. If you, if you already have a native application, what you can try and do is build this on the side and then try and look at removing that whole native application from it. See, Facebook is one of them, right? Facebook, Flipkart.
Flipkart has their own focus in the data. They are being the ones who started the whole revolution in India, or through the front runners, right? And they already they also have the native application. So it's it's that much more difficult to get out of the whole native space right now. But like I said, it's the future. I think Apple doesn't. Apple platform doesn't support it, right? So that's why. So one of the things is we are still so much dependent on Apple. And I use an iPhone. Uh, I know how difficult my applications are on this. But uh, we will be there, very honestly. If, and if you really want to see at what applications are supported on which platforms, I would, I would recommend going to a site called VWA.rocks. There are this list of all the progress of the apps that they have got to their hands on. And if you want, you can look at what, what sort of platforms they are supported.